did that last time as well. I got enthusiastic and forgot to restart the recording. So we're just going to start off with the Hanson East Spinner. I have had mine now for nearly 10 years. Um, Dawn, who was on the meeting, was actually the person who showed me. She was the first person I knew who had an East Spinner. She was one of the first people in the UK to import one to import one over from America. Mine lives into inside this box. Let me just raise the camera up a little bit because that's going to give us a better view. Sorry if we're a bit wobbly. Right, no, closer, don't fall over. It's like Cable City down here. <laughs> everything is tangled up in itself so my lives inside this box which is quite a nice way of storing it and that's the one nice thing about these spinners they tend to be much more compact than a regular treadle wheel um, and it lives in here with with all the associated gubbins i bought mine second hand because i'm cheap <laughs> and if i can find it second hand that's generally how i buy it and one of the things that the Hansons were the first thing to do was to introduce the foot pedal or I don't put mine on the floor. And that's what you use to turn it on and off. So if I pull it out of here. So let's swap to this camera. So that's what it looks like as size and shape as the entire base unit. Um, they're reasonably, it's reasonably heavy, but it's not astronomically heavy. And all the gubbins is all very neatly tucked away on the inside. Um, this is the cherry wood version, which is why it's the slightly darker shade. It's got those black bits are the cooling fans. Um, and as I say, the motors are all tucked inside, inside this bit of wood. To change the bobbins, you've got this Rather shunky. It's the one thing that I would say about the Hanson East spinners that I find really bizarre in all this extreme high engineering is this latch that holds the back bit on is just a bit rubbish. And on mine, wobbles. So mine is not the quietest of Hansons that I know that are out there. Um, Same. I find it twitchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've, I've, I've moved the position of that switch on so many occasions, but it just doesn't. I never quite can get it to sit properly and latch firmly. Um, the bobbins are really nice and big. This is a, one of the very, very early ones, which is why these ones um, are quite so big and heavy. Um, when we did the 12 Days of Christmas Challenge, this is what I spun all the cashmere that I used for an entire jumper. And because I was making a three ply fingering weight yarn, I needed really, really fine yarn with lots of twist, which theoretically an e spinner should be great for. But because each of these bobbins weighs nearly 200 grams with nothing on it, when you come to start spinning fine yarns that you want lots of twist, they can tend to be a bit the back spin that you get on them. And I was having a lot of trouble with, with the yarn snapping. But the, more, the newer ones come with much lighter, much better bobbins. I think it's one of the things they've massively improved upon. Um, you can also get a lace spinner, Katie. Yeah, so I've... I think a few people have got the lace one but I've never kind of and I keep thinking about buying one but then I keep thinking about whether I want to keep my hands in, so I've never never done it but it does the bobbin change is nice and easy um I love plying on it it's the if I've got a lot of plying to do and I really want to make sure I'm that I'm not being lazy about the amount of plying twist I use it's great for that um, and it's great for taking away on top <laughs> because they don't take up a lot of space so I will set it up. It can run on mains power or it can run on a battery power. So if I'm going out and about, generally I'll take a battery with me. And um, I'm gonna plug it in to the mains for tonight though. Cause I'm, one thing I'm, go I'm gonna just get it running so that you can sort of hear the differences in noise that various different models have. Let me put that down on the floor. So yeah, somebody said you can get Sorry, rattly. You can get a lace flyer, which is smaller and lighter. And it, you can also get a woolly winder for it, which I do have. Um, and I don't really use because I, I think you're either a woolly winder person or you're not. And I've come to the conclusion that I am not a woolly winder person um, because it likes a very steady, constant feed on. And mm -hmm. sort of you can't. So, 
totally agree with that. I got one with mine and I hardly use it, to be honest. I thought it might make life easier. I could just sit there going, woo. And yeah, and I, I don't, I keep finding I get into tangles. I just don't seem to get on with it. Um, I found my first, so I tend to use a woolly winder mostly. Yeah, I think I know some people that really, really like them, and I just, I just don't seem to be able to get on with mine. And um, so I prefer time, my woolly winder to ply with. I spin on the normal bobbins, then I ply with the woolly winder because you can just feed. Yeah, yeah. I think it depends on how you move your hands because I. It tend does. To I, I find it, I find it even worse for plying because you're because I tend to um, get a make and then feed it on all in one go rather than that steady sort of you you have to develop this sort of circular mm. you know, never manage to master. Yeah, I tend to sort of when I when I put plying twist in, I tend to sort of put plying to sort of have a set length and then feed it all in one go. So and that feeding it all in one go. Mm. The mm. Wally Winder just doesn't like it. Wally right. Winder developed their own e spinner, and I did try it when I went to um, Yarnbeck Sheep and Wool a few years ago. They were just launching it on the stand, and I made the mistake of trying to do long draw on it, and that was an utter disaster because it just couldn't cope with that. The twist levels right, and there you go. Have I want the yarn to go into the bobbin, which is when you've got Scotch tension that's what you can do if you could have that yeah. quick, quick draw on once your twist level's right. And um, so, yeah. You can also have two point spindles. This is the thicker one. There's a thinner one. Yeah. I use my thicker one to wind my shacked bobbins for my, my weaving. Yeah. And I use the thinner one for doing point spinning. Yes, I, I, I use my, I've used mine for rewinding, winding stuff quite a lot, but I've not put mm. it on off it, so I must get round to it at some point in time. Maybe we should have a guild session, Dawn. If anybody who doesn't know, Dawn, Dawn lives just down the road to me, and she's the form, well, she's still current member of the guild that I go to, so <laughs> Dawn is the person who, who in, enticed me to buy my e-spinner. It's all her fault. What number's yours, Katie, out of interest? Uh... It is 1980S. Ooh, mine's 179. Yeah, but that's, Dawn, Dawn's is one of the very, very, very new. original Hansons. She's had hers for a very, very long time. And um, so the other thing about with the Hanson is that it matters the order that you connect the bits together, um, which can be a bit of a, ooh, that's a bit weird. So there's the Deadman switch, and the power cable and depending on which way round you put them in will depend on whether this acts as a you have to press that button down in order for work and it releases and it stops like on a sewing machine or you can set it up to function as a tap on and tap off and that's the mode i mostly use it in dawn you're a tap on tap off aren't you yeah yeah i don't like holding the um holding the switch down because I'd have to use my foot to do it, and I. Um, well, I, when I first got mine, I was a dead dead man uh, girl, but if you like, um, but uh, I think I've sort of uh, I've come round to being a tap on tap off since I've had the nano and the um, the, the electric eel six because they only work as on off and I've sort of got used to that and I've actually thought well actually no I don't really want to be holding my foot down the whole time yeah yeah especially with the six if you're plying a lot oh, right let me just come down yeah, won't go down from that well the main reason why I bought a Hanson in the first place was because you know, I was getting to the point because unfortunately I have health issues I was getting to the point where it was either jump for this brand new electric spinning device or give up spinning because I couldn't treadle, treadle very well anymore. And I think that's the thing, the e-spinners have, have democratised who can carry on spinning for, for far longer. I mean, I, I've been in class, this class I taught at summer school, um, I had somebody who'd, spin, who'd suffered a stroke and couldn't manage her treadle wheels anymore, but she bought an Ashford E-spinner and it meant she could keep on spinning. 
um, for far longer. So anyway, I'm going to quickly, I'll spin a little bit, just because one of the things that you get on e-spinners in comparison to treadle spinners is that because you have the noise of the motor, you do tend to get um, more noise. Mine, I think, is one of the noisier Hansons that's out there. <laughs> Yours, I think, is quieter than mine, Dawn, despite being yeah. much older and probably used far more. And Jill's is quieter. And I think I've just got a bit of a lemon. Um, <laughs> too much tension on there so i don't know how much noise is coming through the microphone not a lot none at all none at all hang on let me swap to be the one that's by let me mute that oh no because then i'm not going to, be able to hear any of you hang on so i've got to do got to do sound swapping over Right. Okay. I've swapped the microphones over. So theoretically, can you all still hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. I've no idea whether I'll be able to hear you because I've had to swap, turn off the sound completely on my laptop as well. So, because otherwise we were going, going, getting, getting horrible feedback. Let's. So that's that's kind of what the Hanson sounds like, works like. You can swap and change different flyers between them. No, still not hearing anything really, apart from the occasional little tap. A little bit more speed. Okay, no sound. For, oh, no silent. No sound. Oh, hang on, it's because I've turned. Should turn the sound off again. I can hear you click the um, on-off switch, but there was no noise from the spinner. No noise coming through for you. No. Hmm. no. How weird. Anyway, <laughs> we can hear me, but not the East spinner. I suspect because what the, what Zoom has is a built-in background okay. noise reduction settings. So I suspect that's what's happening there. Um, so that that plan requires further 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 thought, probably some re separate recordings if I maybe get a chance. But that's that is the setup for how the Hansons work. They come with different size orifice reducers. They work really well. Um, and they are they're solid and they 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 run and run and run for years. Um, so that although they're expensive, they are they are quite a, they're a good quality piece of kit. Right, the second one that I've got to show you, and then I'm going to hope that somebody else has got some other things that they might want to pull out, is the one that I think Dorothy's. Um, have I said your name right, by the way, Dorothy? Dorothy or Dorothy? Sorry, Dorothy. So it's it's just the uh, yeah D O R D E if you pronounce it Dorde. Dorde. daughter yeah right yeah and I I think this is the one that your husband was making for a period of time yes and is the one that he's he's coming up with a development a, a further model if I remember tried to go and do so I thought I better find the link to this. <laughs> so this is this is what and the reason I picked out this one to have a go at was that one thing about e-spinners is that they are expensive. 
remove that spotlight. Spotlight that one instead. So one thing about e-spinners is that they do tend to be pricey because they're quite high-end bits of kit and they, they're not selling huge numbers of them. So this one, remove my battery pack. So the other thing about the Hanson is it will run on battery. In fact, most of them will run on a battery power. And I will put that box down there. Is it will take an existing Ashford flyer and it uses a small motor and it's not very it's very very complicated so which means that it doesn't cost an awful lot of money and one of the things i wanted to be able to talk to people when i was teaching workshops or similar and they would say oh i'd love an e spinner but it's really expensive was that this was a really good option since brexit it's slightly less of a good option <laughs> um, but as a different version, because I know some people have got the electric eel nano, so we'll come on to that later. But to my mind, it was a different option of offering somebody an e-spinner that was of a bigger size and a bit more versatility than the electric eel one, because you, you can fit much bigger bobbins onto it. So it's another one that runs off my wallet. <laughs> either mains power or you can run it off a battery. Let me plug myself in. It is like spaghetti junction for cables down here. Mm. Okay. That's the battery one. So this one has the speed dial, instead of it being attached to the e-spinner, it's in line with the power. Um, and it just has a simple on-off switch. And what I tended to find myself using is rather than using the on-off switch, is actually using the speed dial as an on-off, just remembering where I got it set, because that gave me the functionality of having a soft start. So let me thread it up. I think I've lost, oh no, I haven't lost the orifice hook. Okay, let me check all those bits and pieces. Let me swap to the other camera. Can't even find myself in the list. That one. Okay, so let me just move, shuffle ourselves around a bit. I am very roundabout in circles here. Let's go down a little bit. It's made things worse. Never try and improve things, only makes it worse. There we go. Okay, so this is, it uses an Ashford, Ashford Jumbo Flyer. Um, so if you've already got one of those, it already fitted onto it, which is another nice thing, but sort of an option for if you've already got a spinning wheel, you could put an existing Ashford Flyer onto it. And... Wave it to start spinning. So it's a really nice, functional, straightforward, didn't cost a lot of money, could potentially use flyers that you already owned. Um, my one thing I would say is that I find the cable to be a bit short sometimes. Um, because the power controller is in line with the power, the, the speed controller is in line with the power cable. And um, sometimes it's quite hard to get it plugged in and have the speed controller in reach. You, you've got to be relatively sort of everything's quite closely tucked up together. But it does a really nice job of playing. It's relatively speedy. Is it as fine tuned as the Hanson? No, but for the money, I don't expect it to be as fine tuned as the Hanson. Um, 
it works very nicely for quite fast fine spinning. Um, it works very nicely. It's it's low speed. Is oh, I've just managed to get myself tangled up. Switch it off before I end everything up. That's because I've fiddled about and changed. There we go. My yarn came unhooked. So at low speed, it works really well. So it's actually, it's quite a nice, one thing about e-spinners is that you can set them running very nice and slowly for teaching beginners, which is really, really good. Um, so particularly if you're over in Europe, uh, is the pro one, when's it coming out, Dottie? Is it? Um, we are still waiting for uh, the last part of, of the woolly winder part. We are getting uh, a spe special uh, special woolly winder designed for it, uh, but I hope it, it will be in the beginning of next year. Yeah, so particularly if you're over in Europe, that's a kind of an, an, a good option to maybe maybe think about and have a look at. Um, because I say I'm, I was really pleased with it in that it works it works nicely. Um, and yeah. I was I was impressed with it. Yeah. Right. I can see though. Uh, if can I comment on it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I can see that you are using the Scotch tension. But yes. Yes. Uh, there is another option on it, just like a, it's kind of a, uh, like a double uh, um, spin uh, treadle wheel uh, that you can use this um, friction uh, brake instead. Uh, yes, which makes it quite easy when you're spinning, especially thin yarns. Um, so that makes it easier, but it's it's a, a little different. Yeah, I'll, I'll show. I will. I'll show people because I do know what you mean. I did mess about with it, but I went back to the way that I like. So yeah, this yeah threaded, that's what you're used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This threaded bar that runs here, basically, instead of having the scotch tension on, what you can do is if you tighten up the wing nut that's located on the it's front and yeah, yeah. Um, that bit there when you tighten that up it brings these two metal plates closer together and what that does is it then puts more friction on the back yeah. of the bobbin there and because you're pressing slightly more on the back of that bobbin there's a um, little felt disc there so you're you're breaking the bobbin that way yeah and um, I found what the thing, one of the reasons that I went back to using the Scotch tension is that I did find, I, I didn't, the, the noise of the, that belt pad brushing against the back was one oh. that I, I wasn't mass, as much of a fan of, fan of compared to the noise that the Scotch tension makes. But I think it's one of those, you end up, you pick the decision that you like, you pick yeah, the version that you sure. like best. But I did like, I thought it was a very clever solution and not one that I've seen before, so. No, it, it, it's uh, it's Kim's own invention, so you shouldn't have seen it before. <laughs> yeah, he invented I, it. I, I've seen it on, on, online, and and I couldn't quite work out how this alternative uh, tensioning arrangement worked. Yeah. So, so um, basically, you nice to see it in the flesh. Yeah, you turn that, and it's just tightening up because it is just a piece of bent metal. It tightens that bent metal up, and it comes and it brushes up against yeah. the back of the bobbin there. Katie, um, what's, Katie, what's the can name? you remind us what it's called? It's called um, Hedaeus e spinner. Let me find a link because I did go and make sure that I got it to hand <laughs> before we started and I will stick it into the chat section. Hedaeus. Oh. Yeah. Hedaeus. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, and I, I, I bought it over before pre-Brexit. Um, so since post-Brexit, post it will now come with, you've got to pay your input charges and everything else um, to bring it in. But it's still not going to be, it's still got to be anywhere near as pricey as a lot of the, the other options. Um, so the other ones that are out there that I have seen, and I know, I know Kate has got one of these, which is the... Um, I'm the name blank. The nano. The electric, the electric eel nano. The so nano. electric. Go I on, have, Kate, have you, it in front of me. Oh, fabulous. Thank you, Kate. Now I can, you can rely on you. <laughs> no, <laughs> let me spotlight you. 
There he is. Um, Dinky fits on my hand. It's sort of tiny, <laughs> absolutely tiny. It weighs, oh, I don't know, not very much at all. Um, and for such a tiny machine, it does have surprisingly large bobbins. Um, I can, if you're, if, if, if you're spinning fine, and arguably that's the best way to spin on this, um, uh, you can get, probably get 50 grams on if you're, if you're lucky, possibly even more. Um, the pro main problem is plying because you just don't have the enough bobbin to sort of get a sensible size skein out of it really if you're um but but you know if you're if you're only doing small amounts it's perfect really i'm sorry i haven't got the wherewithal to to show it running but it's um i got mine through the kickstarter and i have made a number of modifications this is one of the modifications which is an inline switch which i've added to it um so that i can just sort of turn it on and off like that which is essentially my um uh, uh otherwise you've got to use the stop start or there's there is a little button that switches from z to s as well which i think has a middle position which is off as well um i've made a lot of modifications because um i hated the tensioning it's his scotch tension but it has and had an elastic um brake band which uh, was horrible so mine's got an, a, a rubber a rubber band and some crochet cotton now and i also added um super glued on i'm sure there are people who know vampy or know of her um uh, she produced a um, 3D printed little scotch tension mob, knob, which has, is a game changer, absolute game changer. Uh, and so you can just sort of turn it as you, as you would expect. And I just super glued it to the side of the side there where the elastic knob is in. Uh, I have changed the um, yarn guides on the flyer arms to 3D printed ones which are pretty readily available there are a lot of places that sell them on Etsy um, because the little wire hooks just snagged on anything and everything if you're doing anything anything well not even that thick um, uh, it would snag if you're doing anything slightly hairy it would snag if you're doing anything Anything, pretty much anything, would snag on these on on the metal hooks, and I believe my oh, assistant is on. But um, uh, I'm not absolutely sure what the new design is. They're slightly different, but they're still basically metal hooks. Um, um, oh, we've we froze, Kate. I think we've. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Lisa said she's also got one. And um, I, if, if I spotlight to to the Lisa, yes. there we go. Yes, you just okay? Yeah. Okay. So I also made some mods. I, again, the plastic band is terrible. Um, I just have some beads here instead. And then like a hair rubber and just some random, I guess like random cotton linen blend. Um, and also, like you were saying before, this is a great wheel for spinning fine. So like my current project, this is some of that night circus that I'm trying to get like a three ply fingering with. Amazing for this. Um, I actually spun a, a sweater quantity of the textured blend on the Nano. So you can do more textured with it. It's just, it really likes the fine wools. Um, let's see. That's about how loud it is, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I owned one. I bought one, not in the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. but in the, the launch that came afterwards. And I, I, I basically did a bit of spinning on it and almost immediately sold it because I sort of went, this is, this is nice and I can see the market that it fits into and I can see how there will be people that really like it, but it wasn't going to be a wheel that I would ever find myself reaching out to spin because it just wasn't quite... 
I found it slow um, to spin on. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have the 1.1 motor or the 1.0? It would have probably been the 1.0 because it was was it was from the very first yeah. batch. Okay, so this is another. This um, I've actually installed a second motor on the 1.1 so, motor, yeah. and that so gives a lot more uptake, and it spins a lot faster. So if I turn it up ooh, all the way, it's much faster. Yeah, and it has a lot better uptake. Yeah, yeah, and the thing because that was the thing I was finding frustrating on because, like both of you have said, it's a wheel that's really well suited for spinning fine yarns. But I was sort of going, sort of going, oh, but this I'm having to draft and wait for so long for enough twist to come. Right, but now it. that it has the better motor, yeah. it really fixes mm -hmm. most of the issues I had with the first version. Yeah. So let me move on. To I, think, I think the other thing that um, uh, a lot of people said about it was that it was great because of, because of the price point. Um, and it's uh, Janet selling it for £135, which is pretty bloody good for, a, yeah. for an electric wheel. But um, it was being sort of sort of pushed as a beginner wheel and I really don't think that it, this is a good wheel for um, completely novice spinners at all. I so actually worked with a spinner on my Nano, so yeah, yeah. I, I kind of disagree, uh, but a I lot think of I do know do know people that have learned to spin using it, but because particularly the first spot batch that came out of the Kickstarter. Yeah. Because that's, that's out, I was, that's yeah, I was. out out of the box, they needed so many changes that I think as a beginner spinner, you'd just be like, "Is this me, or is this that yeah. I need to change the brake band and change the yarn guides and change the?" So I think that was the issue. But there were a lot of things wrong with it as well, like the um, the people not being able to get it to go round because the um, the motor, the whirl um, that goes on, the, what the pulley on the, that goes on the motor was slipping and things like that. Um, and you know, they didn't know whether it was because the wheel was was wasn't working properly or because they weren't working properly, if you like. And I have to say, I I am a beginning spinner. Um, I bought in my first enthusiasm. I bought an Ashford Kiwi three. Um, and then I started to read a lot of spinning books because just when I got my spinning wheel two months later, the pandemic started and the lockdown and I couldn't go anywhere or have any spinning lessons or go to guild meetings or anything. So I was stuck just with books and um, a lot of the descriptions are always, oh, when you spin slow, then uh, you can see this twist happening and you can see that happening. But I couldn't spin slow on the treadle wheel because you need to treadle a certain speed for the wheel to go round. Um, and that was already too fast, I felt, as a beginner. Then I got a spindle and with the spindle, I, I could see the slower it turned, I could finally see all the differences and what I was supposed to look out for. And the, um, I've got the Nano uh, version two. And for me, it worked really well because I can put it on such a slow speed. Uh, yes, I have to wait when I spin thin yarn uh, that uh, I get enough twist. But for a beginner, it's good because I can wait and I can really draft very, very slowly and see exactly every detail. It might be me that I want to be in control so much and uh, don't like any slops happening and so on. And because it's, I can adjust the speed so easily, I can then correct everything. I really like it Yeah. as a beginner. Uh, and I think, Lisa, you said you've got the, um, the, the, the six, six, which is the yeah. kind of the, the mod yeah. model up. Yes, that's what I have got as well. Yeah. What but I like I about the six is that it really solves every issue that you have with the Nano. It is fixed on the six. So the bobbins are huge. You can easily get four to six ounces on it, a couple hundred grams. Um, it does have a soft start, uh, start and stop pedal. So when you hit the pedal, like if I have it set at a speed, out because now I've tangled myself up. Um, but you can just uh, like choose on the speed dial here, um, you know, have it set at three. And I rarely go faster than three because three is actually really quite fast on this wheel, except not when I have it tangled here. In, in true, in true 
anytime you're trying to show somebody something of going oh I've managed to tie myself in knots of the, yeah, right. <laughs> of teach, teaching online over the past past year because I've ended up with laptop camera lights wheel of the number of times I've kind of stood up because I just needed to fetch and I've nearly bought the entire lot cascading oh. back around me Um, so this actually, it does wind on really nice. It has that nice soft start to it. So you can go very slow. You can go really, really fast on this. This is all the way up to six. I don't think I've even tried to fly this fast. Yeah. Just got mine out so I can see what, how, what I usually use it on. I think when I'm... Um, you know, doing singles is usually at like two or three, and yeah. probably about the fastest I've flied is maybe four or five. Um, it's got you know the DNS for selector here, like the other one did as well. Um, and the host oh, these are also just you know, between two and three at the moment. And um, I, as you say, it probably faster when I'm flying, but um, I haven't spun anything particularly fine on it though. So uh, yeah. <sighs> So that, who produces these ones? That's the electric eel ones. Has anybody got anything else that they've got for showing us? Because they're all ones that I know of and that have spun on that I can talk about, but I haven't got actual examples of them. No. Okay, so if while we're talking plastic spinners, so the other options that you've got are the sparrows and the starlings and the things. Now I have, I it's have a spinning wheel porn. It is. Well, if, if get this, Kate, I've spun <laughs> on a sparrow <laughs> because a friend friend of mine who I've known for a long time, even before I started Hilltop Cloud, um, she. Let me just take some spotlights off people so that it makes it easier to talk and everything else. And um, she, Kate, she was on coming on holiday to, to Wales, so she came but came via my house purely to let me spin on her sparrow, which that's, that's <laughs> friendship for you. <laughs> um, never mind going on holiday. I, I need to go and show Kate to this spinning wheel because I think she'll really, really like it. And I have to say, if, all the things about me saying, I kind of like the Hanson, but at the same time, one, they're starting to get very expensive to import into the UK, and mine mine has some niggles to it. Um, but the the new the sparrow and what I, I she got a starling, and I I'm really quite fancying a sparrow because I, one of the reasons I thought the electric eel nano looked so fabulous is that I wanted a handheld e spinner. That would be the sort that I could carry around the house and be able to put in relatively out of the way places and sit and spin. So, for example, if I wanted to go into the house next door where my parents live, I could literally pick it up, take it with me and plonk it on the footstool and not be having to take this whole contraption. Because even though they're small, they're not that small. Um, and I was thinking, well, the Nano would be really nice for that. It's just a really little portable, just sort of pick it up and carry it around like you carry a suit of sock knitting and um, to have that level of level of portability. And I think from what I've seen of the Sparrow is the thing, if it's if it's the Sparrow spins as well as the Starling does, then it will be it will fit that brief exactly because I'm not that bothered about bobbin size. I'm perfectly OK with making smaller skeins and, and spit splicing them. And we seem to be getting into an arms race for how big a bobbin can we make? Well, there's only so big a bobbin, that mm -hmm. I, there's only so big a skein that I can wind on my lazy Kate and be able to wash and, and process effectively. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Once you start getting over about 150 grams in a skein, well, yeah. yeah. It's, it doesn't fit on your ball winder anymore. Yeah. And I can't wind it in a ball because my ball winder won't cope with with once my book because my ball winders once you start getting at weights of over about 100 150 grams the gears in that stop stop liking it very much so kind of just going you know I, I quite like things to start getting smaller again so that they're more portable and, and the other thing about making things smaller is that the smaller you make something the less hard the motor has to work so therefore the less difficulty you have with noise and overheating and those issues 
so I'm I'm kind of waiting for waiting for the one of those to pop up on that actually if it is available to purchase and that may, might be my one of my my treats for the next six years so it's quite a bit bigger than the nano yeah but it's still still not as I'm big as the, uh, the, the, the spec yeah so but I, I've, the the sparrow the sparrow is a comparable size to the Hanson um, in terms of footprint. Um, no, sorry, the Starling is a similar size, and then the sparrow is slightly smaller, but it's not quite as small as the Nano. So it does have mm. a little bit more stability, and it's it's a three D plastic printed one rather than injection molded, and I think that gives them a little bit more precision in terms of how it's how it gets made, and that you've got sort of don't well, it's got a bit of carbon fiber in it as well so uh, one, it. that's been one of the issues with the nanos is that sometimes the injection molding things are just a little bit yeah a lot of people had to do some sanding on the um on the flyer spindle um the bobbins were were dragging a little bit on the on that's the nano. another thing that got fixed with the six so this is um I mean, on the six, it's actually a metal spindle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't have that friction drag problem. And then the injection molded plastic, I think, is like the kind with carbon fiber in it. So it's a lot stronger than what the Nano had. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's another one. Those, it's you, it's glass, re, glass reinforced nylon, I think. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. You, you, there's a reason why you only pay that much money for the Nano. It is yeah. one of those. Yeah. You start wanting all these fancy things. Well, they, they cost more money. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually, the six really isn't that expensive. It's as expensive as a as a sort of moderately priced treadle wheel. So yeah, I think uh, they're about three hundred now. For the it, uh, over here, it's three hundred and I can't remember what Janet's got it going for. Three hundred. I had it up a moment ago, but I went looking for sparrows instead. <laughs> Janet, Janet, for any of you who are not in the UK who we're referring to, that all of us, all of us who are in the UK know who Janet is. Janet is a lady who runs a company called The Threshing Barn. Um, and Janet is something of a British institution. She certainly is. 325. So, yeah. But what we, um, we mentioned Lazy Kate's, and I have to say that the, the, the Lazy Kate's that come with the six, are actually quite interesting, um, and we. So I, I tend to we tend to think, especially with, with the nano. I was thinking, oh, this is all plastic. It's going to be sort of mm, a bit tacky. But actually, they're the business. Really, they're quite solid. They sort of um, they will take a, a decent sized bobbin, and they're reasonably adaptable. They've got this elastic brake thing, which I'm not that keen on, but it's better on a lazy cape than than it is on a on a spinning wheel. Um, and you get little O-rings to sort of hold the bobbin in place and so on. And there's this sort of jigsaw jigsaw shape, so you can have three of them uh, all joined together, and they they sit together. They only go one way, so they're they're solid. They don't fall. Yeah. Start. So I quite like the um the lazy cake. The lazy cake. Right, the other one, which is relatively common, and there's another one that's improved in leaps and bounds, is the one that Ashford make. Um, and I've I've had them in my workshop, so I've sort of had brief brief chances to mess around with them, but it's not been one that I've ever had an extended sort of chance to to use. Um, but the, the Mark Threes are very nice, very quiet, very sturdy, but they're huge. Mm -hmm. um, as in, but the, 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 the little yeah, thing they... that I've got here that most of my e-spinners sort of sit and take up half of it, it takes up nearly the entirety of that because it's a huge, great big honking piece of wood. Um, I've got an Ashford e-spinner, uh, yeah. the three, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, I'm not at home, so I haven't got it with me to show you. Yeah. But it is, um, yeah, I just absolutely love it. Yeah, I think they they spin really nicely. After after two 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 generations of sort of working out what they were trying to do with it and seeing what was possible, I think Ashford have actually really got it really right in terms of 
very stable, runs very well at a variety of speeds, works for a lot of spinners, is quite nice and quiet, but it is just, it's very huge. And because it's nearly all solid wood, it's very heavy. Yeah, um, extremely portable. No, and they, I mean, it's to a certain extent, heaviness is good because it means that you don't have that issue with things moving around on the table mm. as you're using mm. them. Because that, I mean, that's one of the other issues with the Nano is that because it's so little, if you're not careful, you can find yourself you've sort of vibrating got, off a table. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I've, I've put got, some I've on got mine. suction caps on my on the bottom yes. of mine, which I I stick them to my battery. Yeah. I've got a, a battery pack and I stick them on that or 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 something relatively weighty um, to to try stop doing that because it, I mean, yeah. that's the other thing that's transformed e-spinners is the fact that you can now get a i done with mine in the true manner of you end up with everything scattered everywhere you can now get the batteries which are so much power so much capacity and yeah. not very much money which means that you're not tied to a tied to a socket um did, did you say the size of the Astro compared to the Hanson? I think it's probably about twice the size. Um, if not slightly more than that. Yeah, because it comes with sort of quite a big sort of wooden framework surrounding yeah. it. It's, it's, it is quite big. Because um, it's, it's, does it still take the standard Ashford flyer? The, yeah. The jumbo, jumbo flyer, because that's pretty yeah. jumbo in itself, isn't it? It is, it's Whereas, a jumbo flyer, yeah. Yeah, so which is the same as the flyers on the, the Hanson and the EL6 are are quite um paired back really, aren't they? Yeah. Well that's let's as a comparison, so that's that's the Hanson Woolly Winders flyer compared with the um in fact let me take it off and that will solve the problem. That way I won't need to be holding up something that is still attached to the electricity. <laughs> it's always helpful. So I think probably the Hanson and the Ashford flyers and the Ashford jumbo flyers are they're pretty comparable in size. The Ashford flyer is a bit longer. Um, oh no, actually, no, it's not. Mm. It's, that's it's got the orifice extender in it, so. So very roughly, they are they are almost hmm. almost identical. In size. You've got more bobbin for your box with the Hanson. Yes, yeah, the bobbin takes up takes up. You've got far more capacity on the bobbins compared to the Ashford ones because you haven't got this this section here. Mm. Mm -hmm. It does a sh far sharper turn to get to get driven onto the bobbin and the orifice. The orifice is sort of built into and carved into the wooden section instead. Um, but yeah, so the, in terms of bobbin size, but again, I'm I'm not bothered about the bobbin size so much as the spinning experience. Once I've got beyond 100 grams onto a bobbin, I sort of start to get to the point of going, well, but why do I want to? Why do I want a bigger skein than that? Um, and nothing drying drying the skeins once they're wet starts to become a pain because once they get once you get so much yarn all bundled up into one great big bundle the middle of the skein takes forever to dry. So I'm i yeah I'm I'm less not so keen on this dry for how big is how, what's the capacity of it, and not least because the more yarn you start to pack onto a bobbin, the performance is naturally going to start to alter quite dramatically because there's no way that a, a motor can carry on turning it at the same speed when it's got 10 grams on compared to when it's got 200 grams. So you always end up having to make those, you end, despite what, what the clever things that they, the manufacturers try and do to get around that problem, it's, you end up putting more of a strain on the motor because, because you're turning more yeah. mass around. Yeah, I find Nizzy nodding off a huge amount of yarn as well. It makes my arms ache. Yeah, I mean, it takes so, so long as well. You've only got like <coughs> yeah, many a late night because of that. I have I have a skein winder precisely. I'm so bored of winding winding off skeins on a Nizzy noddy. Um, yeah. it's, it's a luxury that I could I could afford to have. But yeah, definitely, there's a limit to how much you want to be trying to skein off in one go. 
So I kind of hope that we stop we stop getting bigger and bigger and bigger and we start going back to well, how, how can we make this really good and really portable? Because that's what East Spinners are really good at is that portability. So that's, I mean, I've taken, my, my Hanson's been on a canal, canal holiday with me because and you there's no way ain't no way you're taking a spinning wheel on a canal boat <laughs> so. so has anybody else got any other e-spinners that they've tried because there are a few others out there i can only remember vaguely when i was first looking to um move to an electric spinner and the reason why it took me a long time to find one i really liked was i tried the original Ashford electric spinner but then there was this thing called a Roberta yeah mm. I think you can again see huge and I just didn't like it yeah I, I hated it to be honest I think that you can still get Robertas and I, th I think they're an Australian made and I think mm. they're Irish tension yeah probably yeah. why you really I, liked it Dawn knowing knowing how you spin yeah so yeah, yeah, it was, Irish tension and fine spinning are not two words that that are generally associated yeah. with one another. No, I mean I was at the point of I'm going to have to give up spinning when the first advert went into spin off for the Hansons, and I thought I'm going to have to plump for it. I haven't. There is nobody to try one over here. There is. Um, it's quite an investment, but it's my only choice. Yeah. By the look of it. And as it happened, my friend was originally coming over from America. So I asked if I bought it and ha had it sent to her address, could she bring it with her on the plane? And that was when um, Iceland's big volcano went up. Yeah. And she got as far as Newark and had to turn back. But my, my spin is actually well travelled yeah. <laughs> without me. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the, it's it's nice that there's there's starting to become more options out there because I do think that it it's they're good they they democratise spinning, um, mm. and and particularly particularly things like the electrical electric eel and I I'm, I'm not a fan to spin on one personally it wouldn't be my wheel of choice. But at the same time, being able to say to somebody, there's this option and it, it costs it costs this much in the UK and it will work is actually it's a really, really good thing because the, the big treadle wheels are getting more and more expensive. And um, particularly here in the UK, because we don't have any we don't have any native UK spinning wheel manufacturers which I find utterly bizarre. I can't work out why there's there's not, we've never, we've oh, no. never really had a company develop their own set of designs. And it's not that there's a shortage of spinners here. So, and I don't think anybody's- I don't yeah, That's quite funny actually, because I think the spinning wheel was invented in UK. <laughs> India. Hmm? Depends on depends on what sort of spinning wheel and yeah, yeah. one of those is a long. Yeah, the, the the threadle spinning wheel was was a uh, uh, UK invention. Uh, in India, they had the shaker, mm -hmm. yeah, the hand driven. Um, yeah, actually, I think it it is a UK design from the beginning. Yeah, I mean we've we've had a few different people over the past who've made. What I call the craftsman style wheel, in which everything about it is individually hand turned, but mm. nothing, nothing of the likes of Louette or Ashford, where parts are being mass, mass machined and then assembled by hand. That was my first wheel, was a handcrafted one. Yeah, my Roger Sear. It's, it's really odd and in the same way that sort of going with that nobody we've never nobody as far as I know has ever launched a sort of a UK e-spinner even tried to and again yeah. you see it seems like one of those particularly with how easy it is now to 3d print and laser and laser engrave and, and get things injection molded so so yeah it's interesting right I am going to suggest if anybody else has got any questions of anything they wanted to see or wanted to ask, I hope that you've, it's all been worthwhile to sacrifice an hour of your Thursday evening or Thursday lunchtime or Thursday 
afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever in the world that you are. Um, what I will do is once we've finished, I will um, get the recording processed and I'll upload it so that you can have a watch back of it um, later on. Um, thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for organising. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Has anybody got any suggestions for anything that we might want to do as another one, maybe in a month or two's time? Because I'm happy to organise another one. There's, I have, I have a professional Zoom account, so have, have <laughs> Zoom account can can easily do these things. What about peripheries for spinning wheels? Such as, you know, your lazy capes, your um, game Skate. wipers, yep. all that kind of thing. Yeah, hand, hand, hand carders and combs. And yeah, things. all mm. the peripheries around it, uh, the blending boards, the um, hackles, all that sort of thing. I can, I can see this ending up becoming a two-parter again. Of, 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 of We'll do fibre processing tools and, and all the other bits as another one, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah. That yes, sounds like a great idea. Fabulous. Right. With that done, I'm going to let you all get, get back to your evening activities. For those of you for whom it's still daytime, I hope the rest of your day is, is pleasant and filled with nice things. Thank you, Katie. I Thank you. Thank you. I should go and see what that naughty line is up to. I think you should bring the dog with you next time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. She, she's... She's currently being a terrible teenager. She's reached oh, that excellent. point in time where she knows what you wanted to do. Yeah. But if you if you think that she's going to actually do it, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> We're currently in yeah, 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 I gotta run. over sitting. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thank you.